All right, uh, trying to help my fellow man again. In this case, uh, more on the cord cutting and being a cheapskate with your, your home media. Uh, and I'm doing it now with this device. This is the Fire TV Recast from Amazon. Uh, what you're looking at here, this is a four tuner model with a one terabyte hard drive. Essentially what this is gonna let you do is pull down a signal off of an antenna uh, and then it will put it out to your TVs via your Fire TV devices and it will also record your shows. Uh, it's a very simple device, uh, just a simple gray box here. Uh, I have a couple of inputs in the back of it. Coax, that's for my antenna. Ethernet in this case, uh, I've got the it networked via Ethernet. It works on Wi-Fi as well, and then just a power output. Um, so what we do here is uh, this guy is connected to my home antenna. Now, this could be any sort of antenna. This is super easy. You can get one of those little leaf antennas. Those don't work particularly well here in Atlanta. So I actually have an antenna on the roof. You plug the other end of that antenna into the fire recast, uh, turn on the fire recast, connect it to your home network, link it to your Amazon account, and you are absolutely 100% ready to go. So let's explore what that looks like um, on your TV. All right, so on a TV, uh, again, this connects uh, to any of your Fire TV devices. So I have, in my case, a newer um, uh, 4K Fire TV with a pretty awesome new remote that they came out with. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, that's connected to my TV, and here we go. Now, once you have the Fire Recast paired to your Amazon account, you're gonna see this new DVR tab. And what this DVR tab is gonna let me do is access anything that's on right now. So over the air, here's what I can start watching. These are uh, a list of my favorite channels that, uh, that I've selected. Um, then down here is a list of my recordings. Um, also have a channel guide. So if you wanna see what's on uh, in a guide format, you can do that. Um, if any of you are new to cord cutting, there are a tremendous amount of channels out there. So you have all your basic network channels, which you can see I've got CW here, I've got Fox, up higher I had ABC, uh, CBS, a local NBC channel. Like all the network channels are still broadcast. There's a lot of other channels out here. In Atlanta, I'm pulling down 106 channels off of my antenna, um, but most of them aren't very interesting. Um, for some reason, we have a lot of Korean shopping network channels around here and uh, just generally just a whole bunch of things probably not that interested in watching but um, there are some other really neat channels out there as well so i've got some uh, channels that just play movies old and new uh, reruns of shows from w when you were a kid or at least when i was a kid shows like chips um, just kind of some fun stuff to watch if you're just kind of farting around not watching netflix or anything like that as far as sports goes uh, i'm a fan of most things atlanta sports Really, the, the biggest thing that I don't get is the Atlanta United games. Those all seem to be on Fox Soccer, uh, or some of them are on ESPN. But uh, most of the NFL games you wind up getting. Um, so they're all usually on Fox, or CBS has them every now and then. College football, ABC has most of the big games for college football, so you're going to wind up getting most of the big marquee games. Uh, but then NBC, obviously, anytime uh, Notre Dame is playing at home, NBC is airing some football. And then CBS, they always have their game of the week as well. So... College football, I wind up getting a lot. Um, even a Georgia Tech fan, uh, some of the smaller networks on here will will show the uh, the Georgia Tech broadcast if they're not on ABC. So it works out pretty well as far as uh, trying to watch most of the sports I'm interested in. Again, Atlanta United is like the big uh, outlier there, but you know it's more fun to go to those games, anyways. All right, so just a little bit more about this. Um, this replaced my TiVo. Um, there's my old TiVo bolt. This was a great system. Um, if you're looking for that TiVo interface, um, in my opinion, TiVo does a handful of things better than anyone else. Um, their guide is the best guide out there. You're not gonna find a better guide than that. Um, another major advantage that TiVo has over the Fire Recast. Say I wanted to record a show. So on my TV, I've got, uh, if I go over here to my scheduled recordings, I just kind of fill it up with things I may or may not want to watch. And you have options to tell it uh, how many episodes to, to record, right? So I'm not going to fill up my entire TV with 500 episodes of, you know, in this case down here, um, I think I've got, uh, well, it's not even showing up, but like, like Will and Grace, right? So we just record Will and Grace. Will and Grace is on as new episodes. It is also on, on a million of these channels in syndication. You could easily fill up your DVR over the course of a couple of weeks with all of the different instances of this show that are out there. 
Um, this uh, fire recast doesn't really seem to have the ability to know, hey, I only want to keep so many of the recordings across all channels. It doesn't seem to do that. The TiVo did. You could just say, hey, record Will and Grace, new episodes and reruns, and only record 10, or only keep the 10 most recent. It will detect that Will and Grace might be rerunning on four different stations at all sorts of different times, and it's going to figure it out and only keep the 10 most recent for me. So that was a great thing that did. Uh, the other thing that TiVo does that I haven't seen anyone else do is the commercial skipping. Um, so it has a pretty cool feature where I guess somewhere, somehow, they have people that flag when commercials start and stop, and then you get this nice commercial skip button that just jumps you right to uh, right back into your programming once the commercial starts. You're going to miss that uh, if you're coming off of the TiVo. Some things you're not going to miss. Um, for one, the TiVo has a subscription service to it. So in my mind, you're kind of undercutting the spirit of cord cutting because you're still paying somebody an annual or a monthly subscription for that guide service and for the skipping. Uh, I think it was like $149 a year for that service. Um, still a hell of a lot cheaper than cable, but you know it's $150 extra bucks. We're trying to be cheapskates here. The other thing about it, um, the TiVo had this great setup where you could either connect it uh, via a network, um, so you got Ethernet there, it also does Wi-Fi, or you could do this, what they call a Mocha network. Hello, Bailey. She wants to learn about Mocha. The Mocha networks, uh, it stands for Multimedia Over Coax, um, and what it did is it allowed you to take the existing coaxial infrastructure in your house. So. You know, a cable company came out and installed all this coax. They're in all your rooms anyways. You could use that to form a home network for all of the content off of your TiVo. And it worked great. Great bandwidth, great throughput. Um, the downside is you had to buy one of these for every TV. This is like the TiVo Mini. That's another 150 buck appliance right there. Plug it in. Plug in the coax. You got that Moco network set up. You're good to go. Um... What's really nice about this Fire Recast, you could buy a, you know, I think $50 now for the 4K Fire Stick. This is an older one, like I think a second generation Fire Stick that I had. It works on that as well. So if you have older Fire Sticks around. Um, and then, you know, obviously that, that Fire Recast, which I think the model I have, four tuner, one terabyte hard drive, I think it was 230 when I bought it. Um, so 280 bucks of hardware, if you don't already have fire devices sitting around and no annual subscriptions versus that TiVo Bolt when I bought it brand new. Um, I think that might have been about $300 again, another $150 for the TiVo Mini. So that's $450 of hardware. And then I'm also in for that uh, annual subscription of $150 a month. So um, far, far, far cheaper to go the uh, fire recast um, path, but you are going to lose some of the really nice features that the TiVo has. It does make me want to just uh, uh, mention one more thing about Amazon. Um, this is a great piece of hardware. That Fire Recast works absolutely brilliantly. Four tuners, a hard drive, connects to your wireless network. Uh, it actually seems to somehow do a better job pulling down channels than my TiVo did with the exact same antenna and cabling and everything else. Nothing changed in that setup. I just swapped out the um, the Fire TV. So I don't know if it's something about their tuners or probably more likely some algorithms in there that are cleaning up some of what's going on in the channels. Uh, works a lot better. But as I've learned with most things Amazon, they can put out some pretty cheap yet really good hardware, but their UX is just not great. Um, so, you know, if I'm sitting here looking through, hey, here's what's coming up recording, um, you know, you'll see the same show like kind of over and over and over again, just kind of show up as it's going to set up to record versus the TiVo would just group things by the show you're recording and then show you all the instances that it's going to do. Um, another thing that's just kind of annoying. So, um, in the guide itself, uh, you know, you can flip between your favorites, which I have here and, um, all the channels. Okay, that's kind of interesting, but what's really missing to me is there's no search feature here, which kind of starts to blow my mind. Like, hey, wait a minute. Um, why can't I just from here search for a specific show and then you tell me when it's going to be on and I can either uh, set a reminder or a recording? Can't really do that from here. Uh, you can actually do that back out on the home screen. So for whatever reason, you bounce out here, you've got your Alexa search and then it'll 
it does actually know what's coming off of your antenna and the guide. So at least you can do it that way, but really kind of annoying is just not presented right there in the guide. Um, the other part of it is the, it's great that this works on a phone. So one of the things that I thought was really cool about TiVo, you know, three, four years ago when I first set that thing up, 